Hi there, my name is Derek from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan. We're looking here at a 1997 Toyota Chaser Avante 2.5G. This one here with 112,000 kilometers was bought from auction for export over to the USA. It's an automatic transmission, non-turbo version of the car. We'll take a look at the condition of the vehicle and compare it to the auction inspection sheet before we ship this one over to the USA. Now first off, this is a one uh, 1JZ engine. This is a non-turbo version of the 1JZ. I believe it puts out around 210 horsepower. This engine, even without a turbo, is a fantastic inline six-cylinder, very smooth, variable valve timing engine. These are pretty fantastic. Also, the uh, timing belt was changed at 111,000 kilometers in 2020. The coolant and the oil both look good, but it's always a good idea to get those changed when the car lands. Hood dampers only somewhat hold the hood up. Over time, that's going down. Okay, close that up, turn the engine off. We'll talk about the condition of this one. Okay, so as you can see, it's a full original condition car. This was probably owned by some kind of uh, older gentleman or so has a lot of body damage on it this is something we knew based on the auction sheet and um, certainly has life left in it mechanically it's really good these jzx 100s including the chaser mark ii cresta are really really fantastic vehicles to drive and so it does have some life left in it there's good reason to get one with some body damage when you're buying at auction you can get a lower price you want to put a wide body on it and some big wheels then a lot of the damage that's on this will go away or at least be underneath the wide body i think uh yeah good car needs some body work that's the gist of it so let's go over the auction inspection sheet here it comes from 1997 which is the second year of these this is an early model or a uh, zenki i'm sorry koki version koki's late model zenki's early model yeah 2.5 liter engine. You can get these with the 2 liter engine. I highly recommend at least the 2.5. The 1JZ is a much better engine than the 1G engine. Okay, this is an auction grade 3.5 with an interior C. The mileage is 112, 145 kilometers. That's original mileage. Automatic transmission, alloy wheels are original. Power steering, power windows, and airbag. Original pearl paint. And the only sales point is it was purchased from user. The report here says steering wheel has a lot of peeling on it and has a cover on it. I never took the cover off. You can see a little bit of the sun damage on the side spoke of the steering wheel though. Interior dirty and wear, in my opinion. Not much wear and not very dirty, so that's a positive. Dashboard comes up. You can actually see that through the dashboard here. See that orange part? It tends to warp due to the heat inside the car. You should be able to get that down by heating it up and placing something on there that's hard, like jamming it between the windshield and the dashboard, but I don't actually know. Maybe someone on the internet has some more information about that. Door molding has been painted and has uneven paint. I'll tell you that in a second. And wheels and door mirrors scratched. Looking at the body here, we got A3, which is large scratches, U2, which is a medium dent, A3, U2, AU3, a lot of damage over here, A2 over here, paint peeling up here, and then A3 on the back. Okay, so as you can see, that's quite a bit more damage than your average one. It looks like all the damage pretty much is around each of the wheels. That's why I was joking around with a wide body. But to the right person, that's not really a joke. You could put some over fenders onto this and uh, it wouldn't require too much body work. Or you can just give it a full repaint. Once a car reaches 25 years old, chances are the paint isn't in that good of condition anyway. And if you were to repaint this, put some nice wheels on it, then you can get something of a discount over what you would normally pay for a good body condition one. If you know how to paint, all the better. Okay, so the Chaser is kind of halfway between 3 Series and 5 Series size. Or if you want to go Mercedes-Benz C size and E size. I think they're really good packaging. They have double wishbone suspension front and rear. I really truly think that these drive better than any BMWs of the era. Maybe not better than current ones, but it does give you, you know, a lot of good um, old school feelings from the car. It feels smaller than it actually is when it drives. In my opinion, this is a better car than the more expensive and similar Aristo, which is on the Toyota Crown chassis. I really can't get enough of these cars. I think they're close to a perfect car when they came out. And 
they were probably too expensive for Toyota to, to make. Oh, I'm sorry, guy. I'm blocking with my car. Sorry. He has to come in at the other angle in order to get that. And I can't stop the video. Hmm. Sorry. Come inside. Uh, okay, so damages. We have... I'm going to go over all the damages here, so bear with me. We've got a couple of large chips there in the paint that have a little bit of surface rust in this one here. Okay, both headlights are peeling. Hi, Sumimasen. I'm going to cut the video here. He just told me to move the car. Okay, editing magic. We are back, and that, <laughs> that means I spent an extra 10 minutes on putting this video together. That guy can totally get into his parking spot if he would just turn his car around. I specifically parked like that way on purpose, but he didn't want to do that, so. Fair enough, it is his parking spot. It's probably annoying having my car near. Anyway, peeling paint on, well, peeling like a UV um, protection paint on the headlights. Okay, front bumper has a lot of flex cracks. You'll see that here, 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 here. This is why I think it was driven by an old man, because he's old enough where he's just like, screw it, I don't care if my car gets flex cracks all over the bumper. And so this bumper really needs a repaint. Hood is good, roof is good, trunk is good, side panels are generally good, but around the wheel wells, have a look. We got a dent here, and we have a touch-up paint. It basically goes all the way up here, and then two splotches there of it. We also have touch-up paint here, and here to cover scratches. Here's another one here. And then this mirror not only has scratches here, but it's loose and therefore is not usable. This mirror has to be replaced. The side bumpers, they painted both side bumpers with a paintbrush. And so you can see the brush strokes in the paint. It's pretty bad. So those should be repainted, I think. Okay. Now going down, you're actually looking pretty good until we get to the end here. We got the same kind of thing, touch up paint to cover up a scratch that's all the way around there. Also wheels, they're the original wheels. They're 195 tires, very under tired in my opinion. You want at least a, uh, I don't know, the turbo ones come with what? A 225 and a 205? I think they're staggered. These ones are 195 and 195. These side bumpers, this one here is peeling. I don't think these are original, but they could be. Sometimes dealer options, they have that kind of stuff. They still do actually these days. Okay, so coming along here, we've got a pretty large dent here. Okay, the back bumper also has some flex cracks up here and some more here and here. And this part here looks like it's dirty. All of these are actually little pits from backing into a concrete wall. The concrete wall degrades over time, becomes kind of spiky. And when you back into it, you get all these micro scratches like that. Okay, the trunk is really dirty, but as far as I can tell, it's in pretty good shape. Coming down here, we have some transfer paint so that can come off easily. We've got a dent here. This is the biggest damage on the car. I'm gonna come around here so that you can see it clearly. Basically, this part here is dented in. There's a pretty large dent in here. There's a scrape here on the side bumper, and there's scraped paint in various places, basically all the way to back here. So have a close look. Probably stands out more when it's a little bit lighter, when the sun's shining on it. There you go, you can see that pretty well there. Okay, so that's what they called the AU3, and let's just go back to this page here so that you can see it's pretty well described there, how it looks. And then coming around here, we have another scratch along here. I'm not sure why this person got so many of that kind of scratch. It's not an easy kind of scratch to get on there, so a little bit strange. Also, this one here has the same painted on brush strokes and then two sections right there and right here where we can see the original paint underneath. I'm not sure why they painted them to begin with. Okay, hood good. We have a little bit of fade on the front grille. 
And I guess that's it for the body. So yeah, the body's definitely the weak point. As far as I could see, we're good mechanically. I drove the car just briefly up and down the road. Drives nicely, transmission shifts well, AC works nice and well. I'll turn this on so you can see what the gauges look like. Pretty basic looking, to be honest, but uh, not really that much of an issue. It is cool to have nice gauges, but this was the 90s where almost all the gauges look like that anyway. Part of the charm of the 90s is that green tinge to everything. The grandpa seat covers, I've been calling them that for 15 plus years. And eventually I'm going to be a grandpa. Uh, probably can happen in the next 5 to 10 years. Uh, but that depends on my children, I guess. Chaser embroidery. Or not embroidery, there's like a tag that's sewn on. These are original seat covers. They have a really lovely frill up here. And uh, these seats are exclusive to the Avante version, which is a mid-grade for this car. Not the Tourer S or the Tourer V, which are the higher grades. Actually, Avante is the same grade as Tourer S, just S is the sports chassis. Well, not chassis, the sports version. But for all intents and purposes, it's the same, just carpets and stuff are different. Coming in here, you don't get the swing vents in this one. You get the very 90s dashboard including a CD player and a tape deck. Cool. HVAC, pretty simple. It's automatic if you want. This one actually works. Sometimes they get stuck not being able to work. And then it says no smoking down there, which is a nice little bonus. It smells lovely in here. That can't be said about every one. A lot of these chasers are pretty heavily smoked in. There's a number of scratches in this area here. Can you see it? Hopefully. You can open this for some cup holders and a bent screwdriver. Huh, maybe it's like a panel pulling tool. What does it say here? Can't read it. Like a N, N fluke or something? Don't know. Anyway, the cup holders work for both types of cu cans, the small coffee ones and the bigger regular ones, but they don't look that secure. But uh, then again, I don't know. Uh, you can also slide this back if you want to access the bottom row, or you can slide it all the way, almost all the way forward. Kind of a weird system. I don't know why they did this. It can go to like there before it separates. So it's like a magnet. And then you can open this too if you want. The trunk came with a lot of junk in it. Uh, you tell me if you want any of the junk, but uh, probably not. None of it looks of any value. So I'll show you that in a second. Back seats. Plenty of room for children if you want. Don't know how many people buy these when they have children. You can fit adults in here very easily. And it's nice and comfy for them. Okay, there is a flip down pillow that has its own part of the lace seat covers on it. Okay, cool. And the trunk, what do we got here? We got a toolbox. This, I probably shouldn't have touched that. There's this with foam around it. Maybe a uh, tire? like it compressed air for tires I don't know what that is inside the toolbox has like a mark II badge and a brush and a grande badge and a few flat wrenches and some sort of really dirty fabric and a duster like get rid of your junk before you throw your car out or trade it in or whatever I don't like dealing with junk. <laughs> yeah. Close that up. Avante 2.5. I called it a 2.5G. I don't know if this is the G version. Maybe it isn't. And I don't even know what the G version has differently from this. So yeah, really good looking car. Known to be very reliable. Known to be excellent to drive. Not the turbo version, but you save a lot over the non uh, when you get the non-turbo. And 210 horsepower isn't too little for this. So... 
there it is in all of his glory. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment. If you don't have any questions, then I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.